Uh, maybe we should restart. Nah, we'll just keep it going here. All right, audio sounds fine. I don't, uh, mine does, yeah, probably. But Juliet's does not because she's not hooked up at the moment. So hopefully she will be able to do whatever she did before. Or maybe I could call her. Here, I'll try that. Uh, let's see, call. And I'm sure it'll cut everything else off. There you are. You, you there? I am. Yes. Yay! Okay. Yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a cluster fark of incredibly... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, okay, it's, you know what the good news is? We can just edit all this crap out for posting it later. Yeah. Yeah. I could, but I probably won't. Oh, yeah? <laughs> no, I could. Yeah, I'll, I'll post out all the, the previous stuff. So, But I think you're here now. Guys, can everybody hear us? 71 people watching. Don't forget to hit the like button. <clears throat> and Godfather is a mod, so you take care of Penny Proud and whoever else comes in here and tries to cause trouble if you guys wouldn't mind. Does your Discord have a voice chat channel? Yes. I sent her an invite. Oh, God, forget it. Are you there? Mm, nope. <laughs> now you are. Okay. All right. Now okay. you're loud and clear. I wish I could put the, uh, the, the video on the thing because you look great. You put on makeup just for me. That's just so mascara. Just mascara. That is so sweet. Thank so you. Sweet. Took me all of about 30 seconds. Wow. You didn't spend hours getting ready? Oh, now I'm offended. I, I just, I don't know. Well, I mean, I mean, I did shower earlier in the day. That's positive. Yeah, that's, that's good. It's good. Helps a little bit. I usually take a shower at least once a day, sometimes twice, depending on, you know, what happens. So anyway, can, can everybody hear us okay? 74 people watching, hit likes, please. And of course, I will link your channel below and probably to your writings and all that other stuff, the angry vagina monologues or whatever. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty funny. That was pretty good. Once you read? Uh, I think I just read like uh, a couple of them, but I, uh, the, the dating app one, I think, was that an angry vagina? Like five parts to that series. That's the, yeah, that's the Angry V series. Mm hmm. Okay, the Angry V series. So, but anyway, so now that we're here, uh, let's uh, talk about you. You uh, are a writer. You went to UCLA. You're a model. Uh, and guys, Juliet appeared in Playboy. <laughs> Is that right? 90 or 2006, I think, or 2005, something like that. Well, um, uh, the, the centerfold was 2008, but, ah, uh, the okay. other, I worked with them on special editions that were on a lower level from 2005 onward, but I haven't done that for over, for a long time. So. Sure. Well, yeah, it's been like, you know, 10, 11 years, but yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I, I think it, in, in your wiki, you have a wiki, you're important, Julia, you have a wiki <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, it said something like you were in the, tours, you know, in the Midwest or something, you know, like <laughs> maybe there, <laughs> but you were, uh, like the pac 10 girls or something like that, uh, in, in one of their issues or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I, that was uh, how I got started. My my initial reason for posing for Playboy was because I had hoped to write about it for my women's studies honors thesis. Yay! So I thought, you know, yeah, let me let me go in and see like what I can talk about in terms of what's of what's not what's helpful for women's empowerment and what's not. Um, the nuance there, uh, using myself as the guinea pig. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what was that like? I mean, did they come to the campus and say, hey, we're trying to recruit some some ladies to be in an issue, or how, how does that work? Uh, they actually posted in the Daily Bruin, and um, I actually didn't see it because I, I didn't really read the school newspaper, but my roommate saw it and thought that I should do it, and she didn't have agenda about, like, oh, let's, you know, turn this into some kind of feminist um as it were, but, um, she just thought I should just do it just for fun, you know? And interesting is that I was already, I was already thinking about trying to do an experiment of this nature and it's almost it just fell into my lap. Like, wait, <laughs> I actually really wanted to try something like that. And then it, they came to UCLA. I was like, all right, well, let me, let me, let me make an effort to do this. And at the time I was, uh, really sculpting myself at the gym and, um, 
you know, doing all the the tanning and the hair highlighting and crap like that. And, and I, and I tried out and I made it. Um, so then things escalated from there, but I did the vast majority of my special editions, um, before, uh, graduating. And then, um, I took a year after I graduated and just avoided Playboy. And then they came back about a year after I graduated and asked me if I want to be a playmate. And I had initially said no, because I didn't, it's kind of a mind fuck to do all that stuff. You know, I went in thinking I had a certain thing to prove, which is a terrible idea. You should never go in with an agenda thinking I'm going to try to prove this and then end up being wrong or just, you know, that it's more complicated than that. And, um, but, and I thought, well, you know, I, I gave it some second thoughts and I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of past sort of the mind fuck phase a little bit. I could probably uh, make this into something um, that would be good and not like a source of stress. So I then said yes. And um, I wrote my accompanying bio in the magazine, um, the article that goes with it and which was heavily edited by not me, <laughs> um, but uh, what's, what's weird is that that's actually, that's actually a big no, no in journalism. Like if someone heavily edits your work, they need your permission and, uh, they never right. got my permission to edit it. So they actually changed my words. Um, so that was no good. If I could go back, I would change that. And just, just because it's, you know, it's just the integrity of what I wrote, but, um, but yeah, so that's kind of the short story behind it. Well, I mean, that's cool. I mean, did you, did you, did you find yourself around some of these Me Too like scumbag guys? Because you were talking about Me Too in one of your videos, and I'm kind of curious because you know Hollywood and all that other garbage, right? There's all these sort of icky guys. I'm sure you've run into this, especially being in Playboy. I'm sure there's guy. Oh, hey, baby, how you doing? Is that is that what happened or, or what? Well, um, you know what's interesting about Playboy and what I really loved about Playboy is that I never felt objectified. Everyone there was a professional. I mean, they see nude women all the time. They don't give a shit. They don't well, give a that's, crap. That's true. Ass. You know, like it's just it's just Monday to them, you know. And um, so so yeah, like I feel like the place where I was least objectified in the entertainment industry was was Playboy. Not ironically, I felt like I was more of actually a subject there, and that was actually part of my my thesis findings was you know, this is not uh, an objectifying, degrading thing. You know, like I am the center of attention here. Like I'm being, I'm the one they're celebrating. Um, this is this is not like a bad thing, at least in that regard that, you know, women are being objectified in this denigrating fashion. It wasn't that. In fact, um, in, in just my experience in the entertainment industry in terms of auditioning for say like commercials or other stuff, I got way more objectified doing stuff like that um, or just doing background work because you're just disposable as a, as an extra, as a background worker, you know? So just, I think that just much worse. And as we all know, Hollywood pretends to be self-righteous, like, you know, <laughs> as if they're so pristine, like, Oh yes, we're going to be all politically good. They're the worst offenders out there. And the irony of all that is that Playboy's not really an offender at all. Um, so that's, one tidbit for it for you but i mean you know the thing is um in today's feminism for example you you would be considered a body shamer or someone who's putting other women to shame because you happen to be you know genetically blessed right and they're not and it's not their fault because they're fat it's obviously society's fault or, or some crap like that i mean that's mm -hmm. the it seems the mindset today, at least if you look at some of the more crazy feminists, are like, oh, I mean, for example, that um, I think it was in London, there was there was some advertisements they put up, and there was a woman in a, in a bikini, and she was in great shape. She looked nice. And it's like they tore them down because it was offending women who didn't look like that. It's like, what are you talking about? I mean, that's yeah. feminism today, which surprises me that you still even kind of think maybe I'm a feminist. I, I don't know how you could... You know, because I've listened to your videos yeah. and, and, and what you had to say. And I, I mean, you, you know, the, the guys listening are, are going to say, well, hamster is a white knight and he's a cuck. But I don't think we disagree on a whole lot of stuff, to be honest with you. Um, well, you make a good point about about that. Um, I've actually made a video about skinny bitch shaming <laughs> because because <laughs> I, I, I think it's the people that are calling themselves feminists nowadays are mostly i feel like they're they've just hijacked the movement i think it was a bunch of extremists that needed a home and kind of like you know some some wayward 
vagrant, you know, they, they found some, some kind of a place to sit and then they just start colonizing and calling them, you know what I mean? I just, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I think the current feminists of today, a lot of them just aren't feminists, quite frankly, mm -hmm. because feminism was supposed to be about, you know, rooting out all the inequalities and injustices and making them better. And these people are creating new oppressions and that's not what we want, you know? Um, and I think I've, I've talked about this in one of my other videos is, Sometimes with certain movements, especially if they're made into a product called a degree in academia, um, it needs the oppression to sustain itself as uh, worthwhile um, and people need something to do. So they keep you know, creating oppressions so they feel like they're fighting something and they have purpose, you know, but um, I, I would contend that um, tearing down a, a body because it's offensive is just as offensive as anything else like that. It, it, to me, that is body shaming. Like you're, they're, they're body shaming the woman who's in shape, you know, like it makes yeah. no sense. Yeah. Um, so but I, I mean, have a problem. With that. It kind of makes them feel better because, well, okay. Cause I, I have this long, interesting theory of, of feminism and, and all the stuff that's going on. But for one, you, you mentioned, uh, you package it up as a degree and money, you know, they have to come up with something to keep it going. But I mean, yeah. honestly, you know, because in and and you're the same age as my daughter, so you're like 1983. So you were seven, eight years old, but there were all these take back the night walks, and there was you know all of this stuff going on, because at that time there was you know college rape was rampant. I mean, it was, and that was like, off the freaking charts. That. What's that? Yeah, yeah, and then, and so 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 things like that, like you needed awareness spreading about that because there really was something going on. Yeah. So you needed awareness and once the the problem's fixed then you move on you don't pretend it still exists and keep fighting it like beating a dead horse right so mm -hmm. you make a good point like every generation every 10 5 10 years like the culture changes and i feel like this movement isn't acknowledging that they're acting like we're still in the 1920s or 1950s or something you know that's the problem there yeah because i mean i was uh, uh i did a, a couple of roasts on this beata chalette i don't know if you ever watched them or not but She's a women's empowerment, you know, uh, sort of you know, rah rah women power and all that stuff. She seems like a really nice lady, but when when you listen to her videos, it is exactly like we're still living in 1950. It's like, what yeah. what are you talking about? You know, honestly, because I mean, you're you know, you're a well, I guess you're Generation X or Generation Z or whatever you are, L late Gen X maybe. I don't uh, know. You know, I'm I'm technically a, an older millennial. Oh, is that really? Did I miss yeah. a whole gen? Oh, you're right. The Gen X people were you're like your parents. Well, I guess I'm a boomer, but I'm a. Oh no, my I'm mom a, was a boomer. My mom was a boomer. Mm -hmm. I'm a late. I'm a late boomer, but an early X. So it was 1964, right on the line. So mm -hmm. whatever. I actually yeah. wrote a paper in college about how how I was n part of neither. Yes, I had to do that too. <laughs> Even though I was, I'm an engineer. I still had to write English papers. But what do you think? honestly today that women face that are that still something that is an issue i mean there's a bunch of stuff but what is feminism doing about it because part of my theory on this whole thing is feminism quit being about female stuff probably 25 years ago since then it's been about marxism socialism i mean there's been nothing much to fight for for the last i don't know 20 years really and, you know, you could look at these sort of cultural tidal waves like Me Too and, you know, some of this other, you know, stuff like that, that probably needed to happen. But we'll get to Me Too in a little bit because I think it's gone mm -hmm. way overboard. And I believe you kind of believe the same thing. But mm -hmm. what, what are the honest things in the United States that women still don't have that feminism needs to go and rah-rah out there to get it changed? I, I, I don't understand it. And I think a lot of men don't because we look around, it's like, wait a minute, you can do everything. You can get a job, you can go to college, you can, oh, but there aren't that many women in STEM. But Juliet, if somebody wants to take STEM, they can, you know, there, there's no reason you can't sign up for engineering if you're a female, but yet they want people to believe that there's this systemic blockage that women can't get. They want to sign up for engineering and there's a big guy there saying, no, 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 you got to do home ec. <laughs> it's not true. Mm -hmm. So, no. but w w I mean, what's your take? What, what, what should we be fighting for if we say, okay, there, women are having problems in some areas. What, what do we need to do? Because okay. as far as I can, okay, go ahead. Please answer. I have. Oh, one. yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Well, when I was in school, and again, this was, you know, over 10 years ago. So like I said before, things change every five, 10 years and the, the whole landscape needs to be reevaluated and new stats need. I mean, I think people are still quoting old stats from 20 years ago. Um, so when I was in school, a lot of, a lot of the feminist um, focus, there were so many things to focus on, um, but we, we were concerned with women abroad, you know, um, in other cultures. And, and that is a big thing. Like if, if, feminiz if feminism is needed, it's actually in other parts of the world more. It's where the female genital mutilation happens. Mm -hmm. It's women in Afghanistan. It's like that that's legit, like super obvious, you know, where women are just second class citizens or third class citizens. Um, but, you know, when even when I was in school, like just us interfering in within other cultures, whether it was abroad or those cultures that had migrated to the U.S., we were kind of at odds with other. I mean, this is when feminists used to disagree. Like when I was in school, there were so many different types of feminists and they didn't all agree. And we would kind of argue with each other. And um, so the kind of more liberal feminists like myself were like, well, if something bad is happening to women in other countries, we should we should fix that. And then there would be some other kind of um, other types of feminists who didn't like the idea of this Western notion of like, let's impose our cultural beliefs on this no. other culture. No. And let's let if this if this you know, we can't interfere with this other culture because we're just being the dominating, you know, like Americans, you know. So we had a lot of like back and forth with like, well, we should we interfere? No, we can't interfere because that upsets, you know, the cultural balance and la di da. So um there that, that's one element um another element has always been like you said you know um the whole sexual violence and on campuses that used to be a much bigger deal and you know it's it's i think that it's a less of a big deal now because there's a lot more um awareness about it a lot more accountability however a couple of years ago i spoke to a guy who was in, doing his undergrad and he you know went and talked to somebody in a frat and they were still using roofies even just like a couple of years ago. So, I mean, it's still a thing. I mean, there's, there's a culture of people that think it's okay to date rape women and they're on, they're in college campuses and organizations. And now do I feel like this is the vast majority of men? No, but the fact that it's there, it needs to be rooted out. Um, uh, so, so yeah, there is still a, a small rape culture going on. It's not nearly as pervasive as it might've been when, like you said, like several decades ago, but, um, but that is still a thing. Um, and just sexual violence toward women in general or toward anyone, you know, cause I feel like a lot of um, men get neglected in the whole sexual violence awareness schemes because um, I mean, I know actually, unfortunately more men than I, than I thought I should know that have been sexually assaulted by women, you know? Yeah. Yep. And I think that's a feminist issue too. You know, if we're gonna be all about equality, we need to ha hold everybody accountable. It's not fair that men get punished for committing violence against women, but women can commit violence against men. And if men go, well, first of all, there's a culture of men not being able to report it because they'll just get laughed out of the room or they're not taken seriously, or they just, um, yeah, they just, they, they just, they don't feel empowered to tell anybody, but, but I know a few men who have been actually raped by women. And usually it was under the influence of like alcohol. And, you know, cause as we know, like you, you know, men can get erections um, just <laughs> even when they don't want to. So it's, it's, and, and yeah, these, oh, there's so many women who never get held accountable, like women who hit their husbands, like, Imagine like if, if you and I were married and you smacked me across the face, that would be assault. But if I smack you across the face, it's okay. And that's not okay. Yeah, no, you know, so no. I would consider that a feminist issue, but, um, and some other feminists are, are, agree with me about that, but we're just kind of going down the list of things that I think still need attention. Um, so female genital mutilation, we got sex violence, we've got, um, problems with other cultures. Um, the wage gap seems to be less of a problem because of what women are actually interested in. I would contend actually a lack of maternity um, leave is a feminist issue because mm. um, no one's really supported in being parents. And and I think that men deserve paternity leave as well. So I feel like um, that's that's another can of worms uh, that, that this culture doesn't support families and they're and by not supporting families they're not supporting women um because let, women let me, have to freaking breastfeed or whatever you know yeah, we well, can't let, do it let, let me let me just think a little bit on that you don't mean maternity leave you mean paid maternity leave <laughs> because um, you you get 12 weeks per year of family medical leave 
It's guaranteed uh, not, in the not, United not every, States. Not every, uh, not every company is like that. Oh, no, um, no, 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 no. It's a federal law. You have to. Oh, yeah. The federal, you mean you're talking about a federal, federal law? Federal Family Medical Leave Act. Everybody mm. gets 12 weeks a year. Now, I think it's I vaguely not, remember something like that. I think a lot of men can't take it, though. Oh, um, no, no, everybody can take it. It's for everybody. But they can't afford it. I think well, that's the problem. That's is our, the, our, our, yeah. our, our economy is not set up to properly fund something like that. So that's kind of a feminist issue to work on, just this idea that no one can afford to support mothers raising children. Um, le again, um, let, me, let me ding you just a little bit. Having a child yeah. is a choice. You're right. So You're right. I, I want to buy a Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to pay for it. Well, that's not fair. That's, that's crap. Right. Why, why, I, I why should that. you, why should you pay for my choice? Well, why should I pay for yours? It's not so much that I necessarily think the state should pay for it, but we need a cultural plan to make it happen because the way our culture is going, um, because the value of the worker has been denigrated over the last several decades and men no longer make enough. I mean, the, the reason why women went into, to, into the workforce on mass wasn't because they were empowered, although that is the mythology behind it. A lot of <laughs> Yeah. A lot of feminists believe, and, and I wish they told me this in school, a lot of feminists believe that um, women went to the workforce because they were all empowered, and it's not. It's because men weren't paid enough anymore, and they had to go in to make ends meet, and so you had women part-time workers, and part-time workers make less, and so it kind of was this downward spiral of less and less money being paid to the worker, and now everyone... You know, you can't hardly anyone can be supported on one single income. And now it's like you need a dual income for the house. So so I'm not saying like, hey, we need a communist or socialist system. But what I do notice is that our economy is set up against families, against women being able to raise babies. And that's a huge problem. <laughs> um, so. Oh, Juliet, my God, you, you hit but, the nail on the head. You, you absolutely described it perfectly. The society today is not set up to support families. Why do you think that is? It's, I think it, if I had to kind of summarize it, I think it has a lot to do with the economy hijacking various political trends. Um, at, well, I shouldn't say the economy. Those in power harnessing the economy and political trends to um, extract as much value from the worker without compensating the worker, which has led to this system where we all have to work our asses off to pay the bills and we can't rely on a single earner as easily as before. So even if you make enough money, say you, you're married to a woman and let's, you know, you guys have issues with marriage in general, but like, say you have a partnership and you're both bringing in money because you have to, because the cost of living is so high and the wages are just too low in comparison, you know, you can, you can take family medical leave, but you know, you can't wean a baby in three months, you know, and then we all wonder why we have, you know, this, we have psychological issues, mental issues, a uh, mental illness on the rise. It's because no one raises their kids anymore. No one can afford to raise their kids anymore because our society isn't set up for it. And I think that's also a feminist issue um, that we yeah. need to tackle. So, so there's a lot of feminist issues that reverberate to the rest of society. Um, but if it affects women and then by large everyone else, then it's worth it's worth looking into. Um, um, you weren't part of the communist club at some point at UCLA, were you? No, I wasn't. I am not. Sure. <laughs> yeah. What you just said sounds very socialist to me. No, no, no. I mean, like, here's the thing. Like, like any uh, critically thinking, open-minded person, I'm open-minded to the idea that every single system has pros and cons. And so what I would love to see for the future is we take the best of capitalism and the best ideas that come from socialism and the best ideas that come from every kind of, you know, trend, and we mm -hmm. distill them into, like, what's going to work, you know, for everybody. And... Mm -hmm. So, because, because, yeah, I mean, like there, there are benevolent ideas that come out of socialism, but, but the right, the whole package sucks, you know. So, yeah, and kind of like with capitalism, there's great things in capitalism, but if you let capitalism run amok, you get, you get kind of a similar systemic oppression in a different sort. So we really need a balance, and we need to be able to cherry pick out the things that work and discard the rest. And I think that is a work in progress because no one really knows all the answers we're just trying to we think we think we have good ideas and i think that's the difference between people on different sides of the political spectrum is 
everyone thinks they know how to make things better and they won't know until they can execute their ideas, whether they're dumb or brilliant, you know? Um, and then of course there's people that just want money and power, which I feel like that absolutely dominates the political system. So well, getting back to the, the wages that can't support a family anymore, uh, mm -hmm. you do, you do know about supply and demand, right? Yeah. So what happens when you double the supply of people who can work? Yeah, that is uh, a problem. You, you, the, you're valued less. I mean, that makes perfect sense. And that's what feminism yeah. did. I don't think feminism did it. I think it was actually uh, those in power hijacking feminism so that they could exploit workers. Um, so yeah. I think feminism yeah. came along for the ride. I think feminism is like, yay, empowerment, when in, in truth they were just being taken advantage of. Um, but that wouldn't be a very smart thing to be, you know, if you're a smart, empowered woman, why couldn't you understand that? Or did they, and that was their goal? Think you know, it's, I, I can't tell you what those in power in terms of uh, the economic structures that existed back then versus the feminist leaders. And, but I think there was probably like anything else, pros and cons. I think women wanted to have more flexibility in what they could do when they were an adult with free, free will. I think a lot of women didn't necessarily want to be mothers right away or at all. And so they kind of, you know, saw the good in this. I mean, to truth be told, like there, the idea that women work and can have careers isn't a bad thing. It's just bad if it's, if everything else is, if, if we can't have other stuff too, you know, when, when I say we, I mean society. So it's like, if, if we go too far in an extreme in one area, if everyone's working, no one's caring for kids, right? Someone's mm -hmm. got to care for the kids. Like, I don't care if the guy stays home or what, but like, if everyone changes their, okay, if, if, only, if half the population change what they're doing, then the other half, pop, half of the population should also have more flexibility, meaning the men, right? So, um, and I do see that there's a rise in stay at home dads, which is, which is good. I mean, I think, I think flexibility is important. So if anything good came out of all this, it's this idea that we have more choice, we have more flexibility, but we don't want to be imprisoned by our own supposed liberation. And because our supposed liberation happened in tandem to economic powers exploiting everyone along the way, it's kind of, it's convoluted, but it's not all bad and it's not all good, but it's important to understand that that there were um, some less satisfactory underpinnings going on with it. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't, I don't disagree that, uh, you know, there, there's a whole bunch of different things. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's a vortex of, of stuff going on. But yeah. the, the bottom line is, and I don't want to dwell too much on Marxism, but one, one of the fundamental plans of Marxism is to destroy the family. The nuclear family was bad, right? Because it was the... The, the smallest unit of oppression where the man was the bourgeoisie and the yeah, wife was I've heard the that argument. Uh, It's not just I've an argument. That. It is in the Communist Manifesto. You can read Yeah, it. I'm not a communist, so... No, 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 uh... I'm not saying you are, I'm just, but I'm saying <laughs> that, that's what Karl Marx wrote. Now, yeah. I'll make a really long story short. Have you heard of the Frankfurt School? Sounds familiar. Frankfurt School was, uh, it was some German name, but basically there were a bunch of socialists figuring out a way, since the revolution in Russia didn't spread across the world, the communist revolution and all that stuff, their idea was to go through the institutions, the slow march through the institutions to bring a socialist change about. And their idea was to hit the schools, educational systems, religions, and, of course, feminism was a huge part of all of this. I'll send you some links. But the interesting yeah. part is they realized they couldn't get the revolution that they were the violent revolution that they wanted to, you know, get the workers revolting and all that other stuff. So they took a different tactic. And you may have even heard of some of the guys. Marcusa was one guy. And, uh, you know, Gramsci was another. It's, you know, but, but the point is, I don't think this happened by accident. And it could be that the feminists were the ultimate useful idiots, but I'm, I'm going to push back and say, no, I believe they want exactly what has happened. Even way back, I mean, you've, you've read Betty Friedan, right? The Feminine Mystique? 
Um, you know, excerpts, I've never actually read it cover to cover because I didn't okay. find it interesting. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty um, dry. But I mean, there was another writer, Simone de Beauvoir. You've probably heard of her. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, all of the writings, you know, all the, uh, the 60s and 70s uh, crazy people. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. feminists. <laughs> Excuse me. That was a Freudian slip on my part. So, so we, we addressed some things earlier, some of the problems that we need, still need to address. And you mentioned, you know, the, the campus rape problem. Obviously, big problem. But you said it's a rape culture. Is it a theft culture? Is it a robbery culture? Because far more of that happens than perhaps. rape. Perhaps. But, perhaps. But I, we, think, I think but rape we don't. culture is just an easy way of labeling it. I think it's just a convenient way of talking about it. But I think I've actually had uh, conversations with my fiance about like, should it even be called a culture? Because a culture implies it's like this widespread thing. And to some extent, it's widespread, but not really. You know, I think it's in pockets. So um, it's not like um, most people support it. But one example of the rape culture that I'm going to give you, um, kind of give you a better idea of what I mean is okay. the rape culture can also be supported by women. And there is, um, I don't, Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I was going to yeah. mention that, but go ahead. I want to hear your take. And, and this is, an, I think, actually, um, this is very poignant because uh, I'm not going to say it like maybe about five years ago, um, I ran into a, a, a woman who thought it was like a woman. Uh, we were talking somehow about how um, a younger female had been attacked, had been raped because she was wearing something skimpy scantily clad. And this older lady who's not older than my mom, like a little bit younger than my mom thought she had it coming because what? she wore, <laughs> yes, it's the woman that said it was okay. <laughs> well, she didn't say it was okay, but the fact that she literally like her first, her first thought was she did it to herself because she wore a mini skirt kind of thing. And I just, I, I mean, as soon as she said that, I just like flew down her throat and throat and started being like, you have this all wrong like you are saying that that is okay because this woman decided to wear something skimpy so so, so i i fought her on this but but the idea that uh, there are women out there and men who think it's okay for women other women to be abused or not okay but like they had it coming you know means that that's kind of like that's a little bit of rapey culture it's kind of like well you, you you know it's so it's okay you the person isn't almost as at fault. It's almost like, like you victimized him by wearing a skirt, you know, like you made him do it to you. And there's a lot of people out there that still believe that not as much because I think they've been shamed into silence, but like that's, and I, yeah, there are women out there that think that. So. Well, I mean, that, that, that would be clearly blaming the victim. I, I, there's no question about that. Yeah. And, and I would completely. And so that is a victim blaming culture. And so, so I would say feminism could attack misguided thoughts and people like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to, if you want an example of like this kind of the fact that this, this person, this woman and other people like her, like think that that's just normal to blame someone for for dressing up um or down <laughs> yeah that that's 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 something for for feminism to 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 go after oh i would agree i mean i would have ripped their face off myself i mean what the hell are you talking yeah. about however yeah however, yeah so that is that's there uh, the the victim blaming business also gets screened at to men who say maybe you shouldn't drink a couple of bottles of vodka before you go to the frat house you know you might just want to drink a little less because there are people in the world that are that are bad and they'll take advantage of the situation. That's also victim blaming. You see, my Yeah, that's not my, appropriate. My, I think there's my, precautions. Well, yeah, it's just taking responsibility. And I and yeah. I, you know, the problem is as I see some of the crazy ish, you know, not the liberal feminists like perhaps you know you would consider yourself, but these crazy people, you know, oh my god, it's never her fault. Well, nobody, yeah, is, no, nobody in general is not saying, or I should say, nobody in general is saying it is her fault. But a lot of people are saying, maybe you shouldn't have put yourself in the situation. It's like yeah, you're I, walking down the street with, you know, $100 bills and gold chains all over you in a bad part of town. Nobody's going to have sympathy I, for a man like that if he's stupid enough to do that. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, if someone gets victimized, 
if they if they if someone acts stupidly and then they get victimized they were still victimized so that still oh, is like yeah. the perpetrator is still the perpetrator but but yeah i think this uh, i think my biggest problem with what's going on with the consent laws is that if two people are drunk and they both consensually decide to have sex the woman somehow can be called raped but the man can't be that's that that to me that's anti feminist that's stealing women's agency that's belittling us to like we are children that we don't have the ability to 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 um to make a choice um mm-hmm. under the exact same conditions as a man i think that that's actually going in the opposite direction but like i said today's feminists i don't really I don't think that they're feminists, but they somehow get away with calling themselves that. But they, if you really look at what they're doing, they're promoting things that are absolutely against equality. Um, yes. Be, probably because we got so close to equality, they thought, what else am I going to fight for? Mm, well, yeah, you know, I, like yeah, I need to kinda, feel important. Well, yeah, we kind of talked about that before. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, even if a woman is, is raped, you know, it, she's not to blame for this guy doing what he did to her. But there is a bit of responsibility that one takes. And, and many people, uh, well, I, at least you see on YouTube, people just say, yeah, you know, taking responsibility and not putting yourself in situ. I mean, like Chrissy Hine. You, you remember that story? Chrissy Hine was the singer for The Pretenders. By the way, you're coming in and out. Are you hearing me okay? I hear you fine. I'm just backing off. Is that what's happening like that? Can you hear that? There's a little <laughs> bit of fuzz going on. There's a little fuzz? Okay, I'll try to be right up here in the microphone. Oh, my God, she left. No, nope, I'm here. <laughs> I scared her away, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, Chrissy Hind was the singer for the Pretenders. Are you familiar with that band? Back in the Chain Gang uh, and, and all that. But she found yeah, herself in a situation where she said, look, you know, when I was 19, I was high. I was on acid. I was drunk. I was in a short skirt and I had these long, you know, shoes on. And I was hanging out with guys who had I will rape you tattoos. And she said, what would you expect was going to happen in that particular situation? So she said, yeah, I was to blame for that, for getting raped because I put myself in the situation with these people. And of course, the feminists went absolutely apeshit, as you can probably imagine. You can't blame, even if you want to blame yourself, you can't blame yourself with these people. Did this man rape her? Yeah, she was gang raped by these bikers. This was in Ohio in 1972, I think. And she said in an interview, I can't remember if it was Rolling Stone, was like, what, what did you expect was going to happen hanging out with guys who have I heart rape tattoos and they're bikers and she's high and whatever. So my point is, again, it's, it seems situational, right? Like Matt Damon said with the Me Too, you know, yeah, it's disgusting if somebody grabs your ass in a bar, but that's not the same as being raped. But feminists want to conflate all that stuff into one big package. So a, a harmless. Those like guys me. are still rapists at the end of the day. By the way, I mean either way, they are rapists. But, which which um, guys? I'm sorry. The ones who raped her, <laughs> even though. Oh no 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 no! Of course no 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 they they yeah they have, they have, no no no. But you but, know uh, a quick thing about tattoos, like because you're saying, hey, all the warning signs were there. Why didn't she get out? Um, and no no and no, that no, is I, no 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 no. I'm not saying that. She said that. Well, okay. I'm, I'm not um, saying and, that. And the thing she is that said that's it. true. And, and, I'm, and I think it, what helps when people are victimized to kind of, if they can think of a way that they sh- could have avoided it, it makes them feel more empowered. I think like not adopting the victim consciousness is really key to, to feeling like you have some kind of control. So I, I, I see why she blamed herself because it makes her feel like she, she wasn't entirely helpless. Um, so, so I get that. Um, but, but even just just to to the credit of the young and stupid, um, because I think we've all been young and stupid and probably still are on some level. <laughs> I'm old and um, stupid, but speak for yourself. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, or whatever. Um, there's, uh, n- you know, not everyone who has crazy tattoos means it. You know, there are people that have 666 you know, tattooed across their forehead that are like family men that just made a mistake when they were younger, you know, that they look rough, but they're really not. Um, so I think this is like, you can judge a book by its cover, but maybe she kind of in her delusional, drunken, drugged up state, you know, she probably thought, ah, they probably don't mean it. And yeah, I mean, it's stupid, you know, but at the end of the day, I think, I think the real, the real meat of it is yes, we need to take responsibility to protect ourselves. And yes, either way, 
if someone commits an offense against us, they are still responsible for violating us. So if, what, for whatever reason, whether we get violated because we put ourselves in har ourselves in harm's way or because um, we didn't, um, everyone needs to just be held accountable, I think. Um, and a rape sentence doesn't get to be reduced because someone because because she put herself in front of him um but i think the i think the main meat of this is mostly uh, the the other cases where men are being accused of rape who didn't rape anybody yep. it's just women changing their minds yep. after they had drunken sex with someone consensually that is the littles women that 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 makes us like infants that uh, that doesn't give us any agency that's anti-feminist and oddly enough it's being promoted as pro-feminist. And I just have a lot of critiques of the current feminism of today. Well, I, I mean, when, when you look at that particular thing with the Title IX and the guys getting kicked out of college for a, a drunken hookup that they both agreed to, uh, the thing is, the it seems to me, the current theory is that regardless of whether she said yes, she can change her mind. Now, how in the world can that be? You know, I, I, mean, I don't think years, that years down the road. I don't understand it. What's that? I'm sorry. I I don't understand how that can be legal. In fact, if it's I I oh, it's I know not. that this it's is extrajudicial. It has nothing to do with the legal system because that's another of my point coming up. It's it nothing to do with calling the police. It is this guy raped me. It's I mean the Kavanaugh thing would be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. You know whatever happened there, we will never know. It's a he said, she said situation. It's uh, the Gian Gameshi stuff up in Canada. Did you ever hear about that? Where... No, no, okay. no. Maybe I did. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. He, he was this big uh, radio star, TV star, whatever up there. And he apparently had a healthy sexual appetite, but not in, you know, in, in a rapey way, right? He just had a lot of girlfriends and whatever. And mm -hmm. a couple of these girlfriends, years later, after the relationship was over, suddenly he did something, right? And so they put him on trial. And it turns out all of these former girlfriends were collaborating together to, you know, to fake their stories because it was all fake. It was all bullshit. But what saved him was he kept copies of love letters, emails, texts, and all that stuff. Yeah. And it clearly showed to the jury in Canada, the, these women, did, there was no, it, it didn't happen, essentially. And so he was acquitted. So what, what did the feminists do in Canada, do you think? Because they didn't oh, like wow. the outcome of, oh, <laughs> they passed a law called C-51, which restricts the type of evidence that can be admitted. Specifically, if the evidence shows that he might not have done the crime, it can be excluded. Would you like to hear my perspective on why they did that? Please. Okay. So um, when I was in school, um, and this is not a malevolent idea, but I think they you know, the feminist community genuinely believed this based on the statistics at the time. Now, as we know, statistics change every few years. But at the time, we had these statistics that said the vast majority of rape accusations were true. So we were always under the impression that in the vast majority of cases, it was true. So when women were um, shamed or uh, silenced about it, it would actually scare all the other survivors from coming forward. And so we needed a culture of believing them, which is which is where Believe Women came from, uh, the mm -hmm. hashtag Believe Women. Yep. So we were very concerned that, um, that we needed to have a culture that didn't trash these women as soon as they came forward with some very horrifying um, details of their lives just so because we needed to see justice and this is what the feminist community felt like so based on these statistics and based that we want we wanted progress of more women coming forward we needed we needed people to feel comfortable with it so i think what ended up happening in canada is like what what is happening now um even when there's evidence to suggest that a man is innocent we're still kind of stuck in a rut thinking but but, but all women are telling the truth, but, 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 yep. so this can't be right. And somehow he slipped through the cracks and we can't let this happen again. So let's pass a law that doesn't allow like circumstantial evidence to 
override the fact this guy is a rapist. So I think the fact is, is that those women genuinely believe that guy was a rapist and did whatever they could to make sure that no one else like him made it out. And I think it's because they just haven't fully under uh, realized that that that's just not a critical thinking way of going about things and that statistics have changed and there's a lot more false accusations of rape now um, especially for women uh, celebrity men or men who are in positions of power um, in fact in hollywood it's extremely common i found out through a publicist i know um, that so when when women make accusations on being beaten up or abused in hollywood um, a lot of that is 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 fake um and yep. what's what's ironic about that at the same time is that there is a lot of freaking abuse in hollywood so there's a lot of abuse of women in hollywood mm -hmm. yet at the same time there's a lot of fakers as well so so i think the the feminist movement haven't have not kind of adjusted their statistics or their belief systems and we're just still on the defense of like ah oh, we can't let this happen we can't let this happen right so so i think it was just them being just these fervent people that wanted wanted to accomplish more progress even though maybe it already had been accomplished but i mean the, the, i know you understand this the the fundamental bedrock of our judicial system is innocent until being proven guilty yes that's not what feminists want that's why you see title nine you know what the title nine stuff is right i title think you're coming in and out again i'm sorry do you know what the title nine stuff is at the college campus yeah, Just like you was... said, two, two people have a hookup in the dorm room, both equally drunk, and she reports being assaulted. They believe her, right? And he's out. They get kicked yeah. out of college. Their careers are ruined and all this stuff. Yeah. The Title IX is extrajudicial. It is not within the legal system, but these cases are adjudicated by college professors. And a lot of times yeah. men are not even allowed to produce witnesses they're not to cr allowed to cross-examine the accuser as we have in the Constitution. And the reason Obama did this was for the feminists. Well, you, I mean, that, that, that's true. If that is absolutely true, um, I'm going to assume it is, um, that, that you have your, your statistics and your information correct. So if what you're saying is true, that, that men are not allowed to defend themselves and this is extrajudicial. It is. Um, I would say that's quite terrible. Um, and that, you know, like any politician nowadays, they pander to special interest groups so they can secure votes and more power. Um, and I, there's, there's nothing I can say to excuse that. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's, what they did was they low, they they lowered uh, in a in a regular criminal court, the uh, the bar is uh, without a w with a reasonable doubt, right? It has to be. You know, you, there's no reasonable doubt that this guy did it, right? But in the college kangaroo courts, it is what what do they call it? Uh, it's a 50-50 coin flip, basically. So all she has to do is provide fifty point one percent that he did it. He did it. He's out. And of course, he is, re and, and and it's a preponderance of evidence. Excuse me, that's the that's the one. And so basically, it's her word against his almost every single freaking time in this stuff. And there's a heavy bias in college, at least in my opinion, and a lot of people's other opinions, that is for uh, women. It's biased toward women. And so, if she makes the accusation, and there are dozens, hundreds of these cases. I even did a couple of videos where, oh, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, you can look at it or I'll send you some stuff or whatever. But the bottom line is these men's lives are being ruined outside of the legal system. And what yeah. we hear many, many times is that women are afraid to call the police when they've been raped. Women are afraid they got to call the college campus police. Can you think of any reason if you were unfortunately in that horrible situation and you you know this guy did something bad to you like that why wouldn't you call the police well um i guess unless we've actually been in that situation it's hard to, to guess what they're going through but what i can tell you is i have had friends who have been raped and have never reported it mm -hmm. ever and uh, they've so told friends and family but they never went after the guy and i think what ends up happening is it's just a very soul crushing demoralizing thing and they just want to never think of it again they don't want to deal with it they mm -hmm. just yep. they want it to go away you know yeah. and um and i think that's 
I think that's really a better reason why people don't call the cops. Not so much. I mean, yeah, fear, I think, is involved. I think it's mostly that these these rape victims, they're just so traumatized that they they just want to block it out. You know, they don't want to live there anymore. They don't want to mm -hmm. live in that thought. Yeah. Um, and so and... so break victims that might come forward later. It's probably because they worked through those issues and are like, OK, finally, I can. I have the stomach to, to, to address this, you know, um, but there's so I no... think that's why we have delayed accusations going on that are it, it, of the ones that are true. The delayed accusations would be because of just the trauma, just getting past the trauma of it to answer your question. No, no, you know, that's why I can't. So what you're saying is and, you know, uh, I'm terribly sorry your friends had to put up with that. Nobody should have to put up with that stuff. But your friends are actually perpetuating rape culture then, aren't they? Yeah, I, I think it's unfortunate when um, rape victims don't come forward because essentially that guy's still on the loose. You know, he's just going to do it again. Yep. You know, so I think when when uh, so as as a feminist, I would actually consider myself part of the third wave and I'd consider all these newbies part of the fourth wave. But they keep calling these these new ladies and most of them are ladies, um, although there are male feminists, too, which are <laughs> kind of weird. But, um, but but yeah, I would I would consider this new wave uh, the fourth wave, and I'm kind of I would think of myself as sort of old third wave. Um, but yeah, I mean that's another reason why we really wanted survivors to feel comfortable coming forward because we didn't want these guys on the loose. We thought, okay, well if we can show we can get more accountability going on, we can start to clear up the problem, and this was part of the consciousness going on. So. So, so you're right, though. I mean, it is, it is unfortunate when 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 women and men and I'm going to say men, too, because there have been a lot of men who've been victimized by other men and women who don't come forward because they feel ashamed. Like you're letting those freaks continue to, to walk the streets, you know, mm -hmm. like it's right. everyone's responsibility to get in and take care of that. And some people just don't have the balls for it. They don't have the stomach for it. And I'm not trying to shame them for not coming forward. But I mean, it's their decision. But it, I, I really hope that all survivors who are legitimate need to come forward so we can clean up our, our culture a little bit. You yeah, know? Absolutely. But I mean, yeah, we can go some of the guys in the chat want to talk a little MGTOW, but just one final thing on this. Why is it more difficult to call the police if you've been raped on a campus than it is to call the campus? I don't the, have any idea why that would be. That's yeah. the first time I've heard that. Well, I'm just saying. Oh, you, oh, you don't know about the title. Okay, okay. Uh, my point I would don't be see why. Like, if, I think I don't. I don't know why that would be a thing. Uh, it is. You know, that's stupid. You have to <laughs> just you, call somebody. <laughs> you have to yeah. call somebody. So why is it any different calling the campus compared to the law? Can you think of anything? Maybe. You know what? Okay, here's an idea. Um, this is just an idea, um, but I think a lot of people in college are under the impression that campus police are the, are basically the same as regular police. They're just in that jurisdiction, and they probably figure that campus police can be a lot more responsive. Who knows? Because they're right there. It's not the campus. It's not the campus police they're calling. They're calling the I'm, Title IX office. They are not getting legal people. Oh, involved they're at calling all. those guys. Okay, well maybe they figure that they can't. They can't prove the it <laughs> in a court of law. Yeah, I know. It's, and now it's possible. Let's okay. Let's pretend that the perpetrator is real. He really is a rapist. That this is not made up. This is not a false accusation to ruin a guy that pissed yep. you off. It's, you know, he you know wasn't interested in a relationship or whatever it was. Let's pretend it's real. Okay. If a rape victim really wants to see that perpetrator taken off the streets, and she doesn't feel like she's got enough evidence to get him in a court. She's probably going to do the best she can to get him somehow. Um, so, in in the sense of if 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 it was a re if he really was a rapist, then then they're going to go every avenue they can to get at him. And so, mm -hmm. in that sense, that's why I think maybe the Title IX was harnessed. But then again, like you said, like um, you just don't know. I mean, it, this just goes back to the fact that we need a due process. Some of these guys really are rapists, and some of them aren't, and we just can't not have a due process, whether it's Title IX or um, a criminal system. We, we need a due process for anything. Or me too. And, and, and yeah, everything needs a due process, every single thing. And um, we can't have guilty until proven innocent. Now, now, if you ask me, 
do I see how how do I see this ending? Because obviously the trend is already going in the direction of let's let's tear up someone's life before we know all the facts. You know, um, how is this going to end? I bet you're wondering. I'm wondering where is this all going? And I feel like it's probably going to blow up in people's faces over and over again to the point where new new legislation will probably come about to prevent it. But um, until we have basically enough pissed off people, you know, you see you see uh, certain trends continuing, like all this uh, all this uh, politically correct authoritarianism. At some point, it's going to get so oppressive that there's going to be a bigger backlash than just us all bitching about it on YouTube, you know? Yeah. So I don't know how it's going to end other than it's just going to get worse before it gets better. And then it will get better because people are going to take a stand, hopefully in peaceful ways. But and, and and maybe people are are already doing that. The fact that you and I are talking about this and the fact that people are aware of it means that it's out there in the discourse. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. I just I would like to see it go away sooner. I'd like to see the equality come back sooner. Mm. <laughs> but I I don't have any influence in that regard other than just me spewing my opinions um, <laughs> on my channel. Right. Like, and, cool. and here's the thing, never yeah. underestimate the power of planting seeds. So I may not be a lawyer and I may not be a judge, but when we discuss things that are important with our friends, our networks, we plant seeds to consider certain issues. Um, and that reverberates through time. So we're going to create awareness to the point of change. Eventually, if we're not in these exact positions to change, actual law you know yeah okay well this this is a good segue because uh part of the reason with this me too and and all of this uh is is why men are beginning to avoid women and we have now the me too backlash and we have of course MGTOW men going their own way uh you kind of had I, I think that's the one I roasted you on that I got the community strike but what's yeah yeah what's your take on MGTOW just uh you know, in general, yeah, in general, because the, the guys on the chat are going, hey, what about MGTOW? Ah, so if you, you guys are not talking about us, um, <laughs> well, uh, you know, when I first, I, I first, let me tell you, I mispronounced it because when I was doing the research, I had everything on mute, so I didn't hear the pronunciation. So I was re when I researched um, the community, uh, I did absolutely look into everything you guys were not everything, but a lot of things. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't listen to any videos. Uh, so I didn't hear the cor correct pronunciation. Oh, you said so, Mig Migto, I think, probably. MG Tao is what I said. MG Tao, and, okay. and everyone's like, she can't even pronounce it right. I'm like, you're right, because I never turned on the audio when I was doing my research. I just had, you know, the subtitles on. I had, you know, I was reading the articles. And so I was just try trying to get the non-audio version of the information. But what do I think about it? Well, when I first made the video, I just I felt bad for all these men that feel fearful of what's going to happen to them if they do something that's actually quite natural, which is pair up with somebody. You know, mm -hmm. like we're all we're we're social creatures. We evolved to be social creatures that are inter interdependent, and um, and that's that's very natural and and for people to be afraid that they're going to be victimized and then then there's no recourse i just thought it was sad and then i thought to myself well i know of a lot of men who have been screwed over by bad women and i know a lot of women have been screwed over by bad men so i thought to myself well even though you guys have points on many many issues you know yes the courts are have gone a little bit too far in the direction of being for women. At first, you know, we needed all that help because you know, back in the day, women got screwed. You know, um, if they if a man left her, she was completely destitute. So now the courts have made up for it, but then they kind of overcompensated. Whoa, 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 whoa. How many decades ago are you talking about? That was back in the 1800s. Come on, Julia, yeah. let's get modern uh, probably, here. Let's get modern. Probably, I mean, it, it probably was a, a long time ago. It was a um, hundred so and some years ago. Yes. Trust me. My mother was divorced it, there, in 1971. She got alimony. A, she got child support. All of that. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a precedent is what I'm saying. I mean, originally there was a need for it, which is why it exists. So why don't we get so rid now of it? It's kind of, so now it's kind of gotten a little bit out of hand to the point where it's giving um, certain people undue benefits. Um, so that that's the problem. Again, it's, it's kind of like an overshot of the goal. It's like we've already kind of hit the goal and now we're just, just kind of keep... No, no, no. Keep hitting the, it past the goal, the point the, of no return. Julia, the, the goal changes. 
you never reached. That's what I'm saying. It changed. It kind of it got it kind of got pushed further and further out into it's like, well, we, we got what we wanted, but it's like people are just never satisfied when they're when they're in a movement. We talked about this. It's sort of like you need a reason you need you need something to fight for. And I, I do I, I, I do see that you know, the divorce courts are, are, you know, pretty unfair to men a lot of the times. And I, so I get that. Um, but I mean, the, 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 but the in entire... terms of how I feel about MGTOW, um, so I see I see what you guys are talking about. And I think you you guys have a lot of legitimate complaints. Um, and there are things that I would consider in the realm of feminist relevance. Um, and there are things that we need to deal with, not just as feminists, but as a culture. Now, I also think that, um, so other than me just feeling sorry for, for the men that are in these positions, I still feel like at the end of the day, and maybe this is because I, this is how I choose to live my life. Despite the obstacles out there, despite whatever cards are stacked against me specifically, I don't want to feel controlled by the things that upset me that I'm um, afraid of. And so this is where I take personal responsibility. I say, hey, well, let me do my best to avoid the douchebags who would victimize me. You know, like, yes, if they can victimize me and they can get away with it, let me at least take personal responsibility to not put myself in the company of these people. Now, a lot of the MGTOW guys that are watching this are like, hey, exactly. So that's why I'm not going to be around women at all, because I'm just not going to take the risk. And I just thought, hey, well, if it's something you really, really want, if you really, really wanted a relationship with a woman, it's just you're terrified. I personally just don't believe you should ever give up on something you want. Now, if you genuinely are happy and you don't really crave that kind of intimacy with a woman, then this conversation isn't for you. But if it's something you really wanted, I don't feel like you should let the shit destroy your dreams mm. and that's kind of where i had sort of launched from just don't mm -hmm. don't give up really um now i got a lot of backlash from that video which was you know i which was interesting because i was making an attempt to extend an olive branch and i know there's a lot of your viewers that um are pretty mellow and they're not woman hating. Um, they just kind of want to do their own thing and that's fine. But you know, some of your viewers are really kind of batshit crazy and they hate women. They want to take the vote away <laughs> and they want, some of them want women to be killed. And so these guys like have also patrolled my channel too. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, um, it, it pretty much, if, if any female, you know, thinks they can, you know, step on that MGTOW turf, there's some people that get really pissed. Right. So. I mean, I, I'm not even sure I would consider myself a, a MGTOW. I certainly agree with, uh, you know, their concerns. Uh, I, but I'm, I'm more of a, 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 I'm an incel because nobody's going to want me anymore anyway. I'm 55 years old. I mean, what would be the point? I'm curious about that. You're asking me a bunch of questions. So what, what exact, how do you classify yourself and why? Like what happened in your life that has put you in this position of now making these videos? Um about MGTOW issues. You know, that's dangerously close to who hurt you. And that's another thing that uh, we hear all the time. Oh, you so, hate women. So who hurt you? I, I mean, no, no, I, no. I, I, was, I, was, I was divorced in 1986. So okay. I've been divorced for a very long time. That has nothing to do with that. What, uh, okay. what motivates me, and you could say it's red pill or whatever, I see bullshit and it bothers me immensely, politically, with feminism, with all of this crap, I see bullshit and it drives me freaking crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Jeez. It just so happens to be, at this particular time, there's a lot of SJW feminist bullshit. So, mm -hmm. you know. But I mean, it bothers me to a great degree. And I think maybe you will agree to some, to some degree, if we can degree on the degree. That the <laughs> when you start talking about these things that are not based upon reality, not you, but when feminists start talking about things, which the wage gap is not true as they define it. We all know that. Everybody in the freaking world knows that. Third grade math can figure this one out. Yet it persists. It is the myth that will not die. That bothers me. These people that prom uh, promote this wage gap that women are paid 77 cents for the same job, they do not live in a world that exists. They are in a fantasy world. It does not 
happen. And I can show you all the stats all day long, right? You know how it works. I know you do, right? It's the average between men and women. It doesn't take into account anything else. It's an earnings gap. So it sounds great as a headline. Oh, women are paid 70. No, women on average earn 79 cents. Do you see the difference? I know you do. You went to yeah. UCLA. So, and in moreover, I can say that women are less likely to ask for raises. Like I, as aggressive as I can be, and I am a very aggressive woman as women go, um, even I had problems asking for raises when I deserved them. Whereas I think men have more of a tendency to, uh, to do that a lot sooner. Now we can argue that we are socialized to expect less, or you can just say that biologically we're less confrontational because we evolved connections in our brain to keep children safe. And so we're not going to engage conflict and confrontation as readily as a man would on a biological imperative level. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, whether that's the cause or because I was socialized to think less of myself as a woman, you know, like <laughs> it's, it's a, it's, it's probably because you played with Barbie dolls or something when you, and you had pink toys. Yeah. That's the big problem. <laughs> but the thing is, Juliet, you know, uh, you're not paid less for the same job. That is not happening. That is that's quite that, possible. That is it's not only possible, it has been illegal since 1963. Although we all know <laughs> that there are certain professions where women are paid more than men, well, of right? Course. But but my point is you do understand it has been illegal to pay men and women differently based on their sex since 1963. You 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 know that. I don't know if I know that, actually. Okay. Well, now you do. It's called okay. the Equal Pay Act of 1963. It was passed as part of the Equal Rights Amendment that they didn't quite get passed back in the mm -hmm. 50s. The Equal Rights Amendment's been floating around since 1920, just in case you were wondering. So they tried to get mm -hmm. it passed in the, uh, uh, for a very, very long time. And finally, President Kennedy said, we got to do something here because this is obviously unfair. So the Equal Pay Act was signed into law. So it is simply not legal to pay you and me differently if we're doing the same job. For example, if I were going to pose in Playboy and you pose in Playboy, you couldn't theoretically pay us differently, although they get around that because it's different. You're a contractor, you're an artist, and all of that other stuff. But for the average Joe and Jane in this country who goes to work every day, maybe works an hourly job or a salary job, you are given the same pay as anyone doing the same job with the same experience, with the same education. That is the biggest myth that is per perpetuated. I mean, they've even admitted it. Even the, the, the SJW wage gap people have admitted this stuff. And, and, and you're, you're, I, you're an yeah, average, like like reasonable feminist. And you're, you're still thinking the wage gap's true. Well, of course it is, right? I, I don't, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm open to new data. And so the data that has come across, like you said recently, has been showing, well, it's, it's not like an equal opportunity gap. I think what we're really talking about is it's an, is, it's an outcome gap. Yes. So, so that's really what we're talking about. And now that we're kind of zeroing in on why this is happening, it's, it paints a better picture actually of how women and men are different. And I think it's something that we should all try to learn from and not fight. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, this has been a topic of conversation, even in my own home about, Hey, you know, this, this new data is coming forward to say that this is really what's going on. And I'm like, Hey, well, it's a critical thinker. I'm willing to change my mind or my opinion about something with new, new credible evidence. And so, so far as I know, based on what I've, heard and seen, I would tend to agree that the wage gap isn't really our issue anymore. If anything, it's something that we can learn from about the nature of women and men being different. And then we can talk about how that's okay that women and men are different. I think it's okay that women and men can be equal or equivalent, but not exactly the same. Most women don't want to become CEOs. I mean, I think we all like, everyone likes the idea of having, you know, money, resources, power, success, but most women really okay i'm not gonna tell i'm not gonna project myself onto other women but me i don't want to be a ceo 
You know, I want to raise my baby. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of other women want that as well. And you can't do it all. I mean, you can do a lot of it and you can try to balance a lot of it. But the incentive and the want and the desire isn't equal across the sexes, across cultures. And that's okay. And it doesn't mean that we're not equal. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. that we're stupid. It doesn't mean that... We're not as valuable. It just means we're different and that's okay. And I think we really need to have those conversations within the feminist community. Yeah, they, they don't want to have those though. Like I well, said- Well, they're going to have to have them eventually. And that's why you and I are talking is because eventually all of this sort of deflecting the issue, these communities are eventually going to have to deal with the incongruencies. So right now you see a lot of feminist types trying to shut down opposing views, I don't feel like this is going to last. They're getting away with it right now because they have a lot of the media on their side. You think? <laughs> it's not going to hold very long. And if it I... does last, it's because we live in 1984 and we don't want to see that world. <laughs> you know? it's, it's getting scarily close to that. It's getting closer. I'm actually reading that book, but it's, at least it's not like exactly like that book but but it, it's it's a pretty good um uh, uh it's a pretty good uh, dystopia with a lot of stuff in there it's like you know down the memory hole and the past can be changed and that's exactly what feminists do yeah a lot of that's gas exactly what they do gaslighting up, up to the extreme um so but but what i'm gonna theorize because I'm, I'm trying to be positive here and i also i see that there is progress in terms of others coming out and spreading awareness about it is I just don't think it's they're going to get away with it for long. They're going to get away with it for now, maybe. But I just don't think that people who aren't being truthful are just going to get away with it. The truth eventually comes out. And let's hope it comes out peacefully, not violently. But it's the, the truth is inevitable. It's just a matter of time. And I can't predict when that will be. Yeah, I mean, I, I tend to be a little more cynical than you because uh, I think the truth is out there. People are either too ignorant or they don't want to know because as one of the guys I watch, I think it's Terrence pop or somebody, uh, one of the, one of the uh, red pill guys, he says, ignorance is a choice today. When you have the entire history and every accomplishment of mankind on your phone that you can look up and all the information you could ever want, ignorance is a choice. So. Not exactly. If, if Google's filtering out all the search well, results, there, there's you know, that. <laughs> There's a different, there's Duck, right? Duck Go, and there's some other ones that you could use. But I mean, it's sometimes hard to find good information if it's all being um, controlled, you know? So it's like, there's a lot of people who think they're really well-researched. They think they know everything, but they're really in an echo chamber. That's true. That's true. So that that's a problem. So it's like, whereas I think what you're saying is true, a bigger problem right now is that even if people try really hard, they still end up in echo chambers and they're not getting the other side. Well, but, but that's, again, uh, maybe my point is, People don't try that hard. They just, they, 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 you know, they spoon up the pablum when it's given to them by the mass media, which has been incredibly biased one way for decades, right? Even back in the Vietnam War, everybody told, uh, Walter Cronkite told the country, we lost this particular battle when, when the United States actually freaking won, but we were losing the battle. Why do you think they would say that? <laughs> anyway, let's, the, no, the way other story. Uh, but getting back to MGTOW, somebody keeps asking me in the chat, why did you say MGTOW are violent? Is that oh. the, uh, uh, what's his face that shot the okay. people up or whatever? Okay, so I, without giving this person too much attention um, and some people that are like him, for, the, 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 for those of you who are curious, I think there are some in your community who, um, some you might call them black-pilled. Um, right, right, yeah who are legitimately wanting the downfall of women and have expressed it on my channel. Um, specifically, it was, I, um, I left some of the comments there for a time, but um, I, you know, I think James, you saw him as well. Um, but there are, yeah, there are a very small amount of people who call themselves MGTOW who would like to see the women lose the vote, who'd like to see, who likes certain women even to be murdered, um, <laughs> which is, sounds wild. Um, yeah, that's, and that's this crazy. was this was put on my channel, like calling for the you know 
murder of me specifically even too like there was a this one person thought I should be murdered and hoped that someone would do it um and then just and then just called for other women to be uh you know if they wanted a divorce that they should also be murdered and they were like talking about uh an organization that is trying to get accomplish this uh and now this might just really? be the ramblings of a whack job uh, and, and I, would, his, I would say and, yes <laughs> but go ahead but that's what i mean about by dangerous is that there are some people in every community not just the mctow community there's radical feminists there's antifa for fuck's sake you know like yeah, that's true they're really just using this com- whatever community they're in because they want to act out their violent tendencies they they want they want a sounding board for their anger. So I don't think the vast majority of you are, are like this, but with every movement with, and I know you guys aren't a movement. Um, <laughs> there, there are some, there are some extremely bad apples. Um, and I think we need to police our own sometimes. Um, it's very, I mean, you're like, Hey, Juliet, police your own feminists. It's like, well, I've already distanced myself from them. And I guess that's the best we can do sometimes. Um, but, but yeah, I, I feel like the MGTOW community has the range. You've got the super angry, violent types You've got um, the kind of chill types that just, you know, want to live and let live. And then you've got the ones that are just, you know, angry at women, but not super hateful toward women, but they're just kind of pissed off at everything and just, you well, know. Well, I mean, but are... uh, it, it's, it would be irrational to, to be pissed off at a snake because we know what rattlesnakes do. They will hiss and bite you. So I, I'm not pissed off at women. I just think they have a lot of advantages the number one they won't see and number two they're never going to give up now not all women are going to do the things we talk about right not all women are going to divorce rape a guy and take half the shit and all that stuff but every woman can you know um i've been divorced and um i will tell you something interesting i think this goes on both sides for men and women we have a culture that expects when you break up you have to be mean and this is for men oh, yeah. and for women. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That if you break up with someone, it's not enough that you just have to go through the heartbreak that you're not right for each other, but you have to be mean. And if you're not mean, you're a weirdo. So what ended up happening was um, I wasn't mean and he wasn't mean. And we just, it just didn't work out. Um, and we split everything down the middle and I didn't rob him. In fact, I tried to give him my furniture and some, <laughs> sometimes I was effective, sometimes I wasn't, but It was a very equitable divorce and relatively painless as divorces go. And all divorces are painful for the emotional component. But it was interesting because even the friends on each side were like, so weird. You guys like, you know, are friendly toward each other. And it's just like, why does this have to be weird? The fact that the general consensus finds it horrible and weird. I shouldn't say horrible, but they find it weird and awkward that you would be kind to somebody that you're unfortunately needing to hurt. I mean, the, the, that's the default reaction is a tragedy. So I feel like there's a lot of our culture supports this vengeance consciousness that that we must treat the ex like they're a bad person that needs to be punished. And that just simply isn't true. Everyone breaks up with someone in their lives. And, and it just means that you're not right for each other and you don't have to punish the other person and you don't need to take their resources. Um, there's probably a few exceptions mm-hmm. to that. You know, if uh, you guys had an agreement um, and a certain kind of, I don't know, whatever set up there, I'm sure there, there's always exceptions, but I think just we need a better culture, a kinder culture where, where, we, where we understand that things are already hard enough. Let's not make them harder. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, so- it's starting to get to the point, however, Juliet, where even prenuptial agreements are being said to you be just- invalid because the, the man you know, coerced me or he pressured me. So they'll just throw them out. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's I getting to the... It, when you're saying, you, uh, you cut out, you said the man coerced something about, is this with regard to divorce court or... Uh, a prenuptial agreement. Oh, okay. Well... There, those um, are even being thrown out now because, well, he pressured me into signing it or I, I was emotionally yeah, blah, 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 blah. They're throwing it out. Shit to that. Sorry, it's not like you were drugged. No, no, I call bullshit. You signed a, you signed a paper. Yes, but the uh, legal system it. is letting it go. That's okay, why that's, a lot of MGTOW guys right. are pissed. I, mean. I, I, I completely understand why you guys are pissed. And, he, and I was actually thinking in the car the other day that... What would be inter- what would be interesting 
and probably good for society is that the state didn't get involved in marriage anymore, that people had private marriages that were really about their own personal life commitments and that the state didn't have any say. The only reason why people, I think, still get married that have this consciousness is because the state offers benefits to married couples, which is, um, you know, you can you can get health coverage, you can get... Um, you know, lower tax rates. So I think if the state backed out and stopped offering benefits one way or another to people based on their relationship status, which seems weird, I think it was the state attempting to encourage the nuclear family. And of course, um, you know, that's been dissected by um, Marxism. But um, <laughs> if, we took away, if we took away the state trying to interfere one way or another in our relationships and we didn't have any perks to being married, and that people just, you know, if there was going to be a stay at home mom who needed health coverage, she'd probably just qualify for Medicaid because she's technically single on paper and making zero income. So if we just kind of, um, you know, took care of the health insurance problem on an economic level and mm -hmm. we, you know, made our tax code fair for just anyone who's working, um, then we really don't need the state involved in in marriages and, and and like let's say you guys want to buy a house together well you can sign nothing prevents a couple from signing a legal agreement about how they're going to divide and share their assets or how they're going to buy a house in the event that they break up so this doesn't mean that we should abolish all judicial processes with regard to how couples handle resources but if we just if if state marriage was eliminated um, and private marriages just proliferated, um, then I think we'd see a lot less of this stuff. Um, and then, and then people would just selectively sign, um, things that were applicable to their own situation, whether there are children involved or a house involved or something like that. And I also imagine that if this happened, you'd still see like the wedding industry being, you know, booming because people, because marriage really is ultimately supposed to be for your private commitment. I still see that people will privately commit themselves or try to for a lifetime with someone they're truly in love with. And I don't feel like abolishing the state's surveillance of that is going to eliminate these people's ability to celebrate their union um, or uh, live together happily. Yeah. So that I was mean... just an idea I had. Why? Yeah. No, I, that's not a bad idea. But but who 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 do you think wouldn't support the state not being involved in marriage? Which gender do you think would be more supportive of the state being involved? Because when there's a divorce, someone has to enforce splitting things up. Do you, you see my point? I mean, it's just a it's a big ball no, of crazy, I, right? I, I, I think, uh, wait, you're asking me who would be more in support of abolishing uh, state surveillance in marriage? No, I'm saying <clears throat> it's in the best interest of women to keep the state involved because then the state can oh, come after that. the husband to, you know, whatever, or come I, after her if, if that happens to be the case. Yeah, I mean, well, actually, you know, I have a friend who almost had to pay alimony to her ex-husband. So, you know, believe it or not, um, they're... The, the courts aren't entirely stacked against women. There's men still do have um, a prayer, as it were. But um, again, I do feel like as much as you're right, women do profit from marriage, um, at least the protections from divorce court, probably more based on what I'm currently aware of. Um, it doesn't mean that that's good, <laughs> as we know. So yeah, so oh, if, I, if there I would are agree legal repercussions when so let's pretend that legal marriage didn't exist anymore just private marriages and everyone who wanted to be privately married to someone could and the state just isn't it's, it doesn't isn't concerned with it um there's probably going to be judicial processes put in place to protect children and assets should that union dissolve but then people can selectively opt into those agreements ahead of time or duke them out later should they split and separate. And that you can do that with your best friend. If you buy a house with your best friend, there's no romance involved. And then you guys like want to sell it, but the other one doesn't. You have to go through a legal process, you know, like so just like keep it separate, you know, like church and state, keep it separate, you know, like I mean, to some extent, like the emotional commitments we make in marriage should it's 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 a spiritual thing you know why are we letting the state do this anymore um and the reason is because there's financial incentives so i'm saying if we get rid of the financial incentives 
um, then people can just kind of be free to be in commitments without all this extra fear above and beyond than any other judicial process you would have if you bought a house with a friend or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. I, 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 I get your point. I mean, uh, yeah. alimony, in my opinion, need, probably needs to go away because alimony was put into place for exactly the situations you talked about, you know, 100 years ago. Husband splits, you know, wife can she can't get a job. She has no skills. Right. So he has to yeah, support that's, her. That's, that's I mean, I in some situations, alimony might make sense in the context of marriage still being a thing that's run by the state, um, like, say, the. The, the partner, the couple um, made an agreement where he would be the one who worked and she'd be the one who stayed at home with the kids, therefore um, forfeiting her ability to create uh, an income for herself, a 401k, mm -hmm. even a job history and say, you know, he cheats on her or something and they're split up. And now she literally has no income history, no work experience to get a decent job anytime soon and no retirement plan. So in cases like that, I can see some um, legal um, efforts to help protect her, but I don't feel like it should be indefinite. Like I know that there's a lot of women who just get alimony until like forever. Yeah. And I don't think that makes sense. I think in cases of when women don't have a history of an income because they made this special agreement in confidence that they wouldn't get screwed over later. I think in cases like that, it mm -hmm. might make sense to have a limited alimony that, that basically expired after a certain period of years, um, depending on the situation, because I think every situation is different. So so I think it's important that we understand that sometimes it's necessary and sometimes it's not. But I think, I think a lot of the times women, you know, really do get more than they should um, <laughs> for that. Because yeah. especially if you have joint custody of the child, let's, let's pretend that each uh, that the, that each person in the couple had had income, has income history, so they can theoretically support themselves. Um, and then they split, and they both have equal custody. And there are still some cases where that woman will get alimony, even though she's perfectly capable of working and no longer needs to be a stay at home mom because she doesn't even have her kid half the time. You know, like in cases like that with equal custody and a viable work history um, and no need to stay at home all the time, it makes no sense for one person to get paid for a long time. And so if it, if it, if it's unfair for men to be victimized this way, I mean, I wouldn't want, I think if we flipped it and we saw that a woman has to pay a man, I think you would see change a lot faster. Oh, so it's just, yes. it's like just kind of, you know, um, yeah. in other words, this is a long winded way of saying it's unfair um, and it doesn't make as much sense, but I'm still willing to concede to the fact that there are scenarios where alimony may be necessary for a limited period of time. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree. But, I mean, it's it's just a blanket thing now, it seems. You know, oh, she's going to get alimony and child support. Well, wait a minute. Because, you know, that's another thing, you know, feminists say, you know, if you've ever run into Chanty Banks, have you ever, Big Red, do you ever see that video? No. Yeah, I'll send it to you. But she was saying, okay. you know, part of the thing that feminism is saying that women are assumed that they're going to get the custody of the children, that's the patriarchy, is her thing. And, of course, I was thinking about that the other day before we got together on the air here. And I said to myself, they don't have to take custody of the kids. They, they could refuse it and give it to the dad. So don't give me this bullshit. I mean, there, there's a reason why the kids are valuable and, and so on and so forth. So one, one, it's, it's almost 9 o'clock here, so I think we probably should wrap it up. But I was just going to point out, uh, it, basically what feminism did uh, is, is talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, Women should have a choice to do what they want, right? They, could, they should have a choice to have kids or go to work, uh, you know, have, a, have an abortion. Choice is pretty much hooked up with abortion or take birth control <laughs> pills, go to college. All this, it was a choice, right? They, mm -hmm. they, they needed to have these things. They wanted to make these choices in life. Well, so if you sum up, I think the way I look at it, the, the MGTOW thing and not the death threats and all this other stuff, it's men making a choice, now, why do some people get so upset with men saying, I, I choose not to deal with this? Isn't that, I mean, it's not just women who have a choice with their lives, right? And it's legitimate. You guys are, um, you, absolutely. I'm not saying you guys shouldn't have a choice. Um, in fact, go for it. Like I said earlier, if it's, it's something you're genuinely, genuinely happy with, but if it's, but if there is something you want, if you do want female companionship and you're just the only reason why you're, you're not going to engage it is because of 
the fear of the system. I, I'm just personally, I'm just a proponent of never giving up on what you want, regardless of what that is, whether yeah. that's a relationship or a career goal or whatever. So, mm -hmm. so I say to people, if you really want it, don't give up, just be authentic. So if you authentically, authentically don't want it, then that's one less, you know, item on your bucket list. Good. Move on to the next thing. Right. You know, so it's, it's, it's perfectly fine. And, and I think, as you know, the vast majority of men historically never actually end up reproducing. So if some, some of them, <laughs> you know, like, a yes, lot of, I do know that most men don't have babies, you know, that's, that's numbers. Um, and, and so I don't think that MGTOW is going to change those numbers. It's just giving voice to those numbers in a new context of irritation with the current culture. So I don't I don't think that that MGTOW specifically is is going to ensure that even less men reproduce. I don't think that's the case. I think that that people who don't want to reproduce historically won't or historically won't get into a relationship necessarily. But I mean, you, so, you, yeah. you do agree it is a choice. Right. Uh, of course. Well, I, why? Why shouldn't you guys have the choice? The only reason I chimed in and made my video is because I felt like I should remind some of you that if you if you really want something don't give up but if you don't screw it but yeah absolutely if you guys want to like go off and live in the mountains or whatever you want to do or you know live in you know in front of your computer doing your own thing at, yeah why shouldn't you be able to go off and do what you want avoid marriage avoid all that stuff and moreover I think it's healthy to question everything including the things that we think are true like I've questioned marriage I've questioned all kinds of shit even the stuff I believe in. And I think that's a healthy consciousness. And I always give myself permission to change my mind. So a critically thinking mind needs to have permission to change their mind with new information. And you need to also just rem remind yourself that you're never stuck. So if you're unhappy, you can change the situation. Um, but if you are happy, then then great. But but I would never advocate for MGTOW men not having a choice. I, I I feel like that would be pointless anyway. There's no way to control that, even if I wanted to, and I don't want to. But what I do want to remind people is that just be true to what you really want and ask yourself what you want. And don't give up on what you want, regardless of what that is, unless it involves abusing somebody. But you know, like, oh, yeah. just, yeah, yeah that, that's all I really meant to say when I made that video. No, I mean, I think, I think we got it. I just wanted to point out that uh, since feminism was all about females having a choice to do what they want, I mean, there, there's no stigma, for example, anymore if a woman decides she doesn't want to get married, right? But there seems to be a lot of yeah. pushback from well, people right. with men who don't want anything to do with it. It's like, well, are you, are you yeah. a loser? You know, and all this stuff. It's funny because, yeah. like, women are kind of told that they're empowered if they don't need a man or that they yeah. don't want to get married. But, like, the truth is everyone needs companionship on some level. So even this horse shit about women not needing a man, especially, okay, I think the only women that don't need a man or um, need men are probably like lesbians who aren't interested in men anyway. Um, but they, but, but they, but but I think they, they have together, girlfriends, right? <laughs> Usually. Yeah. But yeah. I think, I think people need each other. So, so pretending that you don't need anybody is a form of isolation. And again, we are social creatures. So I call BS even on the women who pretend to be empowered by saying, I need nobody. Now, here's one thing I will say, and this yeah. is what I've used for myself when I wanted a relationship, but at the same time, I didn't want to get stuck with that kind of deprivation consciousness about it. I think it's important that everybody be okay and happy and find the joy in life and in themselves without needing a relationship. I think you need to like yourself first and you need to be independently self-sufficient in your joy and your life path and then bring in the relationship then if it's the right relationship. But I think people that are like just starving for relationships are going to settle on really dysfunctional ones because they're coming from a place of, I need this to feel complete. It's like, no, you need to work on yourself. And then hopefully someone who's also on your wavelength, who isn't super desperate is going to, <laughs> who's, who's also emotionally stable and kind, you know, you'll meet in the middle and have a harmonious, respectful, loving union. 
So this is like saying like, yes, MGTOW, like be happy on your own, no matter what. And if you do really want something, be happy on your own first and make sure you never settle for something less than what you want because you get whatever you settle for. And I feel like a lot of men who've been screwed over by women have probably settled unwittingly for a shitty person, <laughs> you know, and all yeah. of us do it. They're, they're, you know, they're, um, they're, they're yeah. punishes you, right? So. Yeah, there's definitely, everybody's had a little bit of bad luck in that area. So definitely. So we have 106 people watching guys. If you can like, if you hit the like button and I'm going to link all your stuff, uh, Juliet below. So people can go to your place and, and, uh, you know, have a look at your videos. And, uh, this was a lot of fun. I, I really appreciate you showing up. This was great. Well, thank you. It was my pleasure. And maybe next time we can get the visual for everybody. You know, okay. Here um, she is. Yeah. Shaming me. You couldn't even get it to work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Hey, if you're doing a screen record, I don't know if when you post this later, if you're able to show, cause you can see me, do you get to, do you get to post what, what you're seeing later? I, I, uh, uh, Juliet, I don't know. I, I don't think so. Uh, I think I'm okay. just going to have to figure out all of this stuff. I think you can get OBS streaming and actually have, people um it's a different tool but i'll get it worked out but it, 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 maybe we can do it again sometime and we'll get your 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 pretty mug on the on the video that'd be fun okay well thank you sounds <laughs> good well hey well, good luck thank you very much and i'm gonna uh try to figure out a way to shut us off you have a great night and sounds again thanks for showing up thank you you too